Images are a critical part of how we build visual experiences for the web, but not paying attention to how we load those images can leave us with a ton of huge images that really slow down the load of the page. Now we're gonna see how we can build performant fast sites in Astro by optimizing our images with Astro Cloudinary. We're gonna start off with this website that has about 30 images being loaded that were uploaded directly from Unsplash, where if we look at the file sizes, we can see they're all being delivered as JPEGs with a couple megabytes in size. That's up to 111 megabytes in transfer size for those images, which is absolutely huge and unnecessary for how we're loading these images. Now, because we're already delivering them from Cloudinary, we can take advantage of the CLD image component from the Astro Cloudinary SDK, which will automatically optimize the images and unlock other features like transformations. Now, once you have Astro Cloudinary set up and configured, we can begin by importing the CLD image component with import CLD image from Astro Cloudinary. Now scrolling down to where I'm displaying my images, I'm currently looping through a bunch of Cloudinary resources. So each of these assets have the public ID, the width and the height. Now the first thing I need to do is update my image tag to CLD image to use the CLD image component. I'm then gonna pass in the public ID to the source prop. So let's update this to public ID. Now I wanna also define my width and I wanna define a height. So that's gonna be asset.width. Then I can duplicate that to asset height. Now, if I also have alt data described in my contextual metadata, I can also reference that, but I don't currently have that. So I'll leave that blank. But once the page reloads, we can look at the network tab and we can see that because my account supports AVIF, I'm currently loading all those images as AVIF because that's the most efficient for this particular browser. But importantly, we can see that all the sizes of these images were greatly reduced. And now I'm only delivering 4.4 megabytes. Now, 4.4 megabytes is still decently big for loading a bunch of images, but it's greatly reduced than 111 megabytes. Now, the interesting thing though, is we can take this a step further because right now we're only optimizing our images. If I look at one of these images, for instance, we can see that I'm adding F auto, which is the automatic formatting, where we also have the Q auto, which will automatically compress it to a point where it's not going to visually distort it. But what I can additionally do is add a responsive sizing. So I'm only going to deliver the pixels I need for the space that the image actually takes up. Now to do that, I can define a sizes prop where I'm basically going to use media queries to define the size. Now, since I'm just displaying a grid of four columns, I'm just going to define 25 viewport width or basically a quarter of the page. And once the page reloads again, we shouldn't really see anything different. But the biggest difference though, is the images are going to again be smaller. If we look at the image sizes here, we can see that they're also greatly reduced from even what they were before. Now let's open up one of those images. And we can see that we now have this new width parameter, which is also going to sh make the image smaller and give me a source set of responsive sizes so that I'm only loading the pixels I need based off the size that I define. We can see that for each image by simply inspecting the HTML, we can see that we have this source set where we have all those dynamic values based off the width that is provided. Now looking again at the size that I'm loading, I've dropped this now down to 1.3 megabytes. So I went from 111 megabytes all the way to 1.3 megabytes, which is insane. Now this was all just using optimization and responsive sizing, but I think we can take this a step further where now we have access to Cloudinary transformations. And one thing that's bugging me a little bit about this gallery is they're all a bunch of different shapes and sizes. Some are portraits, some are landscape, some are a little bit shorter than others. We can easily take advantage of Cloudinary's dynamic cropping and sizing to easily reformat these to be the same shape and size. Now back on my CLD image, I'm going to define a new property of crop and I'm going to define that as an object because what I want to say is I want to make it a type of auto, meaning I'm going to use AI to automatically determine how to make that most perfect crop. And then I'm going to specify source equals true, meaning I want to crop it based off of the source asset, not the responsibly sized asset. Now by default, the crop property is going to automatically inherit the width and the height from the image that we pass into the top level. Now, if we want that to be something different, like maybe I want them all to be a square. Now I want to define them as maybe 900 by 900. And as soon as our page reloads, we can see that all of our images are now square and they all have a really great crop because they're using AI to determine what the subject is of the photo and making sure that it's positioned and zoomed in and out to get that perfect crop. Now there's a ton of other Cloudinary transformations that you can take advantage of, whether it's generative fill or even replacing the background with AI. So head over to astro.cloudinary.dev to check out the docs. Next up, let's see how we can easily load images and videos to an Astro site using the Astro content layer.